the Baseball Hall of Fame. Mr. Cheesy Pop. Hey everyone, it's Max. I have made the journey, the pilgrimage to Cooperstown, New York. That's upstate New York. It's about four hours from New York City. And I am here at the Baseball Hall of Fame and I'm about to go in. This is like, you know, a, a mecca for me. This is like the, the holy grail of baseball fans. This is where you come to see all the history in the place that it started. Uh, so the Hall of Fame is here across the street and then down here is Main Street. This is like the Main Street of baseball, if you will. We've got the Disneyland Main Street, which is like my favorite Main Street, but I think this Main Street is gonna be right up there. So uh, I'm gonna go into the Hall of Fame and I'll share with you some of my experience here today. I can't wait. Start my tour here, second floor, so let's go. So this is all like self-guided and it takes you through the history from the beginnings up through now. This is the earliest reference of baseball ever. 1791 bylaw which says uh, that prohibited the playing of baseball in a Pittsfield, Massachusetts town. <laughs> Play, you couldn't play it near the town, near the town meeting house. <laughs> I'm looking through a stereograph from the 19th century. So cool. I wish you guys could do it. Can you see? Can you see through? Look, look. I love this stuff. <laughs> this is a ball from the first series of games where admission was charged. September 10th, 1858. That ball's held up really well. I just read that the Cincinnati Red Stockings in 1869 were the first team to actually get paid to play baseball. Made 600 to 1400 bucks, uh, uh, like way more than anyone was making. They're like, hey, people are gonna come and see us because we're good. We should make money. Good idea. I just learned that Originally, baseball, the winner was determined by the first team to reach 21 runs in a game. They changed that rule to nine innings, as we know it today, in 1857. But when it first started, they were playing to 21 runs. Mm -hmm. That baseball card is a Honus Wagner baseball card, which is always considered the most valuable card in baseball card history. Here is a whole section dedicated to the babe. They have a whole section here on the African-American baseball experience, and it's, it's just like, like, I can't even believe that this existed. Look at this. This is Lou Gehrig's locker, and his jersey from his final season. This whole thing showcases some of the Yankees' dominance. Dominance. Dodger dominance. This whole section back here is dedicated to women in baseball. This is so neat. These jerseys are so cool, right? I love it. My favorite player in baseball history is, of course, Mickey Mantle. Um, the jersey I'm wearing is a Mickey Mantle jersey. Uh, for many, he really represents baseball in America. And just like, yeah. So here's his locker jersey. I wore number seven in Little League when I played baseball because of him. Even as a little kid, I knew. I was like, Mickey Mantle. This section is called Viva Baseball, and it's all about <laughs> the Latino baseball players who have made such a difference in the game. This really does take you in chronological order. I'm now in the late 50s when the Dodgers moved to LA. Now we're heading into the 70s, a whole new ball game. Look at the jerseys. You can see how everything really does did change drastically. The famous pine tar bat from George Brett. He's going crazy. We're into the 80s now. This section is like my favorite and the least favorite because it's like the core four, the Yankees, championship years, and then the Red Sox winning the World Series. No! Now this section is called the locker room. It's got a locker for each team with some jerseys and this is really neat. It goes in alphabetical order, so. Starts up here with the Arizona Diamondbacks. And you see his lockers. There's my locker. This is a whole new section of the museum, which is all about the ballparks of baseball. And baseball ballparks are so unique. Every single one has just differences and, and, and really weird quirks that make them different from every other sport. Because every other sport's got the same sort. Everything is the same. But in baseball, the fields, the, the dimensions, the nooks and crannies, it's all different. It's so beautiful. I love it. It's the Philly Fanatic! <laughs> he is the best mascot in baseball. One, two, three, stretch her out at the old ball game. 
You can go in the locker of, of Hank Aaron. Hank Aaron, let's go in the locker. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. I'm, hang, I'm, I'm sitting where Hank sat. Cameron Hank. This section is dedicated to all of the baseball records. Baseball is uh, th like at the greatest history and these records have been preserved. And like Lou Gehrig played 2,130 consecutive games and then Cal Ripken broke that record to 2,632. <laughs> what? It's insane. Most hits in a career, Pete Rose. Home run records. I think the most important number in baseball is 56. That is the Joe DiMaggio hit streak. He hit safely in 56 straight games. So this commemorates that right here. This is a record that'll never be broken, guaranteed. So they've got Hank Aaron's jersey on display for his 755th home run, Barry Bonds' helmet when he hit his 762nd home run. This whole wall is dedicated to the 27 championships of the New York Yankees. Yes! This, I'm obsessed with this. I want a screen like this in my house. 27, make it 28 when they win again. Look at this trophy. Disney reference alert at the Hall of Fame. Running time of Bambi as compared to the shortest game in history. Huh? They won last year, the Cubs. And it was amazing. I could get used to this having a camera person thing. This is good. <laughs> this is great from when the Royals won their first World Series in like 30 years. Yeah, there's the highlights. How about that? There was one perfect game thrown in World Series history, Don Larson of the Yankees in 1956, and this, right here, you got the, you got the, him hugging Yogi, and then down here you got the ball that was used, his, his, his cap that was used, you got a plate. Oh, this is so cool. Never been a perfect game in World Series history since, so it's the only one. Derek's helmet in the 2000 World Series. Remember that? He led off the World Series. Home run. Every World Series ring is in this case. It's amazing. Oh, amazing. Some of them are so ridiculously big, and you can see, like, in the old days, they went from, like, really tiny, they actually gave out pins, and now they're just, like, decked out with all sorts of carrots, right? That's what the carrots? Diamonds and, Diamonds and stuff, and yeah. Oh 2,000 Yankees is my fave, I think. Yeah. The 2003 Marlins one is ridiculous. <laughs> it's so big. <laughs> Holy cow! Phil Rizzuto was a former Yankee, and then he became the Yankees announcer, and his famous phrase was, Holy cow! Every time something good or bad happened. Now is the moment that you've all been waiting for, and I've been waiting for. This is the actual Hall of Fame gallery, where you can see all their plaques on the wall. I can't wait. Let's go. Can't wait to see Mickey Mantle. <laughs> All right, let's see. So Lou Gehrig. You can't get more important than Jackie Robinson when it comes to baseball history and history in itself. Yogi Berra has more World Series rings than any player in history. <laughs> My favorite baseball player of all time, Mickey Mantle, the Mick, number seven. The first class of the Hall of Fame in 1936 gets its only special location right here. And the first class included Babe Ruth. Don't worry led us to four World Series. These are this year's inductees. They get yeah. to sign it underneath their plaque. So they'll be in here in July. Baseball movies are the best sports movies ever. It's not even close. There's a reason baseball makes the best entertainment. It's the most dramatic. What about, what about the Titans? What about Rudy? Um... The natural, bull Durham, field of dreams. I'm excited.
just made a purchase here at Baseballism, which is an awesome, awesome baseball store. And look at this bag you get too. This is sweet. Uh, this is a really cool store. Actually, I've seen them on Instagram first. I didn't even know they had a store here. So this is really cool. They make their designs are just really uh, modern and clean, and I love it. What an incredible day at the Baseball Hall of Fame. Oh, <laughs> I literally could spend days there like really studying every little detail at the hall. It's such, oh, this is a baseball lover's dream. I'm so happy I made the trip up here and I can't wait to come back. I really need to come back because Mariano Rivera and Derek Jeter are gonna be inducted in the next few years coming up and um, I have to come back for that. <laughs> Thanks Baseball Hall of Fame for existing. You're amazing, you're amazing. All right guys, let me know in the comments below if you've ever been to the Baseball Hall of Fame and what your favorite baseball team is. Like, subscribe, check out my Patreon page, and have a magical day, everybody! Go Yankees. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>